What's up guys, new week here, new project on the building, and that is this porch. Um, this is a wraparound 24 by eight, so it's actually 32 by 16. But uh, first thing we gotta do is get our, you know, corners are all marked. Uh, that's, a, that's kind of a weak snap line there, buddy, but I think it's good enough to get going. And we need to make sure that the porch is square, obviously, and it's kind of seems to make sense, right? So what we're gonna do is we, this corner is the one that, if you go way back to layout, this corner is the one that we went off of, which means we can kind of go off this corner of this concrete to also lay out our building. So Greg, I've got a, I've got a, uh, here, take my tape. Take me to the corner, you can burn me a foot, and we're gonna pull a diagonal dimension to hopefully figure out exactly where the square edge of this porch is, and then we'll kind of, right there, buddy, yeah. 25.3 and 9.16 is what I'm looking for. So Greg's gonna burn me a foot and I'm gonna go 26.3, 9.16. All right, is that about where you want it? I think so. All right, so now I kind of know where that corner is. Okay, go ahead and go out there. You can go ahead and hit a, uh, a one foot mark. I'll hold you at 33. That is the max of this stabilitate measure, 33 feet. Okay, so now here, go ahead and stay there. Oh, no, I can't do that. I don't have a big enough diagonal. I was gonna check real quick, see if we were square. But uh, you know, I've done this a lot, guys. I've done a lot of porch builds. So I'm not gonna go into super depth. We're gonna get our brackets set, which are uh, sitting around here somewhere. And these are for six by sixes, and those will set right here. Now, I'm already 100% positive that I'm gonna get feedback about this. My concrete guy did all these control joints right here. And guess what? That's where my brackets go. It's not the end of the world. I know a lot of people are gonna say these posts are not gonna be strong, but this cut is about an inch thick, doesn't go into here, and this is just a troweled expansion joint so there will be a crack here but we're going to use simpson titan anchor bolts and they actually explicitly say can be used on cracked concrete or some verbiage like that so i'm not too worried about it tell me that's not nice so greg's got me right over there where i'm supposed to be 17 10 11 16 there's our mark i would say that is pretty darn good and if we got a couple square measurements on this and all the right dimensions, I don't need to go and check all the diagonals because it's, it's gonna be perfect. Eight. Oh, that's gonna be a tough one to do because it's a hard, that's gonna oh, be a hard one. But look, they get progressively off. All right, let's get these, uh, I'll get these all marked up. You get the brackets you're done. You got the, uh, the Christmas tree. Step it. Oh, no, I think that's in the trailer. All right, I'll grab it. Well, that would be rebar. So these are the anchor bolts I'm talking about. And they have like, I think 8,000 pounds of hold down, something like that. Okay, so that is, that's how easy it is when there's no control joint here. Now what we're gonna have to do for these other sections, we're gonna have to put a Tapcon in to hold it square because it's gonna be very difficult. Actually, this one might not be too bad because it's off-centered of this control joint. This one will be no problem. Okay, now I know this next one though, we're not gonna be so lucky. When I set this on my mark, 
which is right here, we got that control joint to deal with. So I'm gonna take step bit and we're just gonna put a couple tap con in. Okay, so now a little bit easier, hopefully. So now hopefully what we can do is just lock this bracket in right where we want it. So now we can drill this without having to worry about if it goes off to the side, the bracket will kind of keep it in this hole. Like so. And now that's not going anywhere. So seems kind of simple, but honestly, a couple times we uh, encountered this and we didn't even think enough to do the uh, tap cons on the first couple and it just was a mess. So yeah, that help, helps hold it in nice. All right, nothing new. I got a couple more and then we'll go on to uh, getting the post made up. Yeah, I, I think this is pretty impressive actually. Now that I've got this, uh, this SDS, this guy right here on the tip, the, the right way, look at how much concrete, I'm gonna come down here out of the wind. Look at how much concrete dust. Let's see, this is kind of a unique design. I don't know if there's an easier way to do this. This thing is packed full. I think you get the idea. This is just from doing what, one, two, three, four, six brackets? saved all that from blowing around in your face when you're doing the work. But I think most importantly, whenever you do the vacuuming of the holes, the fasteners go in much better. So yeah, you might be like, wow, you're just dumping it out right there. It's fine. You just don't want to sit there and be breathing it while you're working. So I'm just getting rid of it here. This will all get back graded and you know, it's going to go back to nature, which is where it, it's where it came from, I guess. So I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. But I honestly love this hammer drill, especially since I've gotten the vacuum working. This thing is like the exact size to do basically everything that we need to do. It's not too big and it's not too small. <clears throat> All right, bracket's done. Time to get the laser out, get some elevation, make up some cedar posts. Five. Sixteenths. So I'm just getting the difference between my zero point at the door and these brackets so I can determine how high or how long I need to cut my post and to make sure that they're all even. These are actually looking pretty good though. Yeah, these are really close. All right, well now we gotta get a clean end or make sure that there is a clean end and then we'll get our post cut, but we gotta get the beam saw out because it's really the only good way to cut a six by six with one pass. We're gonna try this. I don't think we've ever really done it and maybe we did do it and I'm gonna realize why we don't do it. I don't know, but we're gonna try it for cutting our six by sixes. I just got kind of hungry. All that talking about Casey's and donuts. Okay, so is the Casey's going in there? Yeah, the, the brand new Casey's going in there. Now, the worst part is that I can't go through in a one, one chop, I can't get through six by six, but I can get very, very quality cuts with the chop saw. And the nicest thing is Greg is gonna be busy doing stuff, I think. Probably gonna do the house wrap, yeah. 
So he doesn't have to help me hold. A lot of times I have to hold the two foot cutoff of these. So, you know, I'm glad we set these all up on this sawhorse. Yeah. You just didn't I, want me I to see you. that it works. I told you it's that's, a stupid idea. That's what, it all, that's what it all boils down to. You didn't want to see if this was a good way to do it. Yep, 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 yep. Oh my God. I didn't God. want you to fail. That's what it was. <laughs> We are eight foot porch, minus five and a half inch, seven, six and a half, plus three sixteenths. So every one of these posts is gonna be cut at seven foot, six and a half, plus the dimension that I put out on the brackets because I need to add whatever that was to get it to the zero height of my floor because that floor out there slopes down about two inches in that eight foot. So seven, six and a half, plus this one is three sixteenths. I guess we're gonna find out if this was a decent idea. Maneuvering these posts is a little tough and getting them all squared up on the back of the saw is what I was kind of concerned about. Yeah, that's... Should be good. Hmm. But you cannot be sad about how much easier that is than maneuvering a big beam saw. Perfect, okay, well, I'm just gonna mark this out to be plus three sixteenths so I know which one it goes in. I think this is gonna be nice. I think I probably avoid setting this up usually just because it takes a couple seconds, but I think this is gonna give me a very effortless cut. And I think now maybe it makes sense. Greg has to usually catch this guy. Look at that, look at that cut though. That is a nice cut. But normally he has to stand there and catch this and he's getting sprayed with sawdust because we don't want this to get damaged. This is gonna be our angle piece up on our porch post. And um, if you just let it fall, it'll usually break off and cause damage to this piece. So we're gonna keep these. One, two, three, four, five. Seven more. Better put it on the ISO tunes. Haven't shared the code with you guys in a while, but RRB20 of Savia. Wait, no, maybe it's not 20. I think it's 10. Greg, is it 10 or 20? I think it's RRB10. 20 is a special code and it's probably not gonna work for you right now, but you can always try it. But usually that's like a once in a blue moon. They let me do a 20 per or $20 off, but the RRB10, get yourself some ISO tunes. Um, they work good. Anytime I'm doing the double cut, I always err on the side of caution and I always stay off of my line just because I can always cut more off to get it perfect. But once I've made too much of a cut, this piece is now not accurate to what I want. So uh, just, a, just a little note, I guess. <laughs> Starting to realize why this is kind of a pain. I will say that Diablo blade does cut pretty darn smooth. I mean, it's a, I don't even know what kind of, it's a combination blade. So it's just a 60 tooth. It's not even like a finished blade, but it does a pretty good job. I've been reading seven, six and a half, but I just had that notion that I read seven, six plus my dimension. And sure enough, I had one out there that I did exactly that. Oh well, I make mistakes all the time, all the time. But I think it's only a mistake if you leave it, is what I tell myself. All right, now the true test for the cut hub is 
doing the mitered post. These are all my headers now because this is usually the one that in my opinion is kind of a pain to flip flop up and down. And it's just nice to just make a single cut, but it's also, you have to be very careful on the beam saw because it can, you know, roll on you and mess up. And obviously the miter is very important without a good miter, it's gonna look really bad. So let's see if we can get this looking real nice. That's not good. Must have been getting a pinch somewhere. It probably is all right though. We definitely are gonna take a little bit, uh, take it a little bit careful. We're not gonna just try to um, cut perfect. We're gonna take it and hopefully have to cut twice. That way we can kind of zero in on our line perfectly. Look at this. To me, that is good. So nice, it's almost like a one piece. I mean, you can see my line here, but it's barely even noticeable to your finger. So as long as the miter is good, which it's actually not, it's not as good as I would hope. See that we got a little bit of my guess My guess is when I cut the first one, something is not perfectly flat. I'm not sure. And I'm not sure if it's gonna hurt us or if it's that big of a deal yet. Hmm. The good thing is the first cut I made is the measurement I wanted. So we're probably still good on measurements. This might be more work than it's actually worth instead of just using the beam saw. See, I'm still at eight, which is where I want to be, but see that? Look at the difference. So something's not right. This was good with my square, but my guess is the cut hub might be kind of tilting my board just ever so slightly. So we're going to need to fix that before we go any further because I don't want to have to redo any of these. All right. That, I think, is going to get me much closer. Is it perfect? No. Looks like it tails just ever so slightly, but that right there, we can make that work. Um, if you're a trim carpenter, or you've ever been a trim carpenter, had to do miters on interior trim, that you can make work with a couple little tricks. So we're on an outside with a six by six cedar header. I think it's gonna be good. I guess we'll put it together and we'll see how it turns out. All right, now that we're doing the headers, I have to join like a butt end and also a mitered end on the corners. So I need to cut both ends, which it does take a little bit longer, but it'll hopefully give me a much better connection point when I get on, um, up on the lift and start installing these. This gotta be the heaviest cedar board I've probably ever picked up. Okay, good enough for the girls I run with. I do always look at the six by sixes and try to find the worst looking side and put that up. Uh, in the soffit, nobody's gonna see it. So like this side here has got a little bit of dirt, some checking, some probably transportation marks. So we're gonna go ahead and make that our top. Once again, probably doesn't matter. It's gonna get lightly sanded and stained, but we get one chance, might as well try to do it. All right, let's see if this one comes out better. That one, that thing cut really good. I'm honestly astonished. I just hope it goes together good. And this one, I just need two straight edges, ends, 
no miters. What is it doing? It's like bounce between like good and I think it's because you're rocking it. Because so I'm rocking it. Yeah. I'd say we're pretty golden, my guy. Yeah. Okay, let me just put this temporary screw in and then we'll the we'll go to town. Come on, man. I'm just putting these sick GRK framing screws in because they look at you can't see it but they do an amazing job of once they suck in they don't like mushroom out so when we put this next post in in theory it's sh what yeah that's the top side my guy they should go together pretty decent Yo, I'm waiting for you to like, have your own clip and let go. hey there goes good old Neil the old old garage door guy Sounds like it, doesn't it? Okay, now Greg, it looks to me like I need a slight clockwise. clockwise, like very slight. Give me a little tapperoni. Right there, right there, right there. Leave that. It is getting a little bit warmer out. The sun is warm. Oh boy. Oh boy. That's a heavy one, isn't it? That's a heavy one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Now YouTube knows I wasn't just complaining the whole time. <laughs> They're heavy. Uh, They're some of the heaviest. They are about 100 pounds. <laughs> they are definitely some of the heaviest cedar posts I think I've ever gotten. That is insane. <laughs> yeah, I've done better. That's definitely a lie. What's that supposed to mean? Okay, now that we got the post done, we need to get them plumb and we need to get them secured and we gotta get our, our ceiling connection on our wall defined and that's where we will tie back to so that you know they can't move around. It's the bottom cord of our rafter. I use air quotes because it's, it's not even a rafter. What is it? I guess it'd be like a, we're gonna like make our own truss, but I think anytime you stick frame a roof, it's a rafter. I don't know, what would you, I don't know. We're gonna put some lumber up. It's gonna do some structural stuff and it kinda is what it is. Okay, nice. It's only awkward if you make it awkward, Greg. Just don't, don't look at me. I won't look at you, no eye contact. <laughs> I cannot reach! Hey, yeah. let me get you there, big dog. There. I can only imagine being like 5'8". <laughs> here, here, settle down. I don't want you to get any matter, okay? All right, these are the boards that we're gonna to use to support our ceiling and also our, I guess our rafter. We'll sit on top of it. Greg's getting them marked out up there. Do you want one? Yeah, pass All right, buddy. Give me a second. Let me, let me find you the one I want. There you go. Greg's just gonna screw that up there for now, but uh, we'll get a hanger in it later. I, I know I've said that probably. I don't know, 100 times. Imagine needing a ladder to Greg. I am six foot, by the way. I don't care what my wife tells you. I'm six foot, not 5'11 and three quarters. Okay, so now that we have these attached at the wall temporarily, we can straighten our end up because what we'll do is we know we plumbed our ends and through the middle, we'll actually snap a line, kind of like a traditional stick frame uh, overhang where you run them long, snap a line, cut them off. We're gonna do the same thing with these and that'll give us a, well, 
I want to say perfect, but I'm work on that. I'm trying not to say perfect, but it'll give us a very nice straight facial line. All right, so this is gonna be the fun part. It's always interesting to figure out where the miter out here is. So what I've done is I've cut this end here to kind of go, hopefully, right there. That looks actually really nice. And what we need to do is we need to find exactly where the one foot overhang is out on this corner so that we can then snap a line across all these bottom ceiling joists, I guess we're gonna call them. And uh, so we'll, we'll kind of show you what we do here. If I don't die, these things are bad, bad. Um, I'll show you what we do to try to be as accurate as possible because math is only as good as the building is perfect. And what I mean is I can do all the math in the world, but if, if this is not perfectly square or the exact dimension and you get into these compounded angles, um, you know, things can get off. So we're gonna use math, but then we're gonna check it with uh, just straight up, I don't know what I would call it, but um, non-mathematical, just carpentry. Just things that you just, you know. Yeah, sure, field applied mathematics. Yeah, we're gonna use real math, but then we're just gonna kinda do some redneck stuff. No offense to rednecks, I probably kind of am one. Um, so let's go open the lift and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use some math to get a, an idea on where I should be if everything is perfect. So that is nine foot, actually eight, 10 and a half, and it will be eight, 10 and a half. Is that correct? Eight foot, 10 and a half run, eight foot, 10 and a half rise. Diagonal of 12, six, and five, eight. So Greg, hop up a ladder on that corner right there. And I'm gonna mark right down the center of this guy. Where exactly did you want me? On that corner. Down there? No, no, right here. Right here, so you can hold my tape. And I'm gonna go 10, six, and five eighths on the top side. I know it won't be perfect, but. Up here? Yeah, all the way to the corner. All the way down, as low as you can though. All right, all right, hey, hey, hold on, hold on. Let me, let me just change this. Yep, 12, four and a half. Okay, so this is just mathematical theory. If we do this, this should be, if it's perfect this way and this way, and if everything is perfect, I can run my fascia here when I cut this guy. So I can do something like this. This will be my two by six fascia, right? Something like so. Boom, boom, I think you get it. And then I've got to cut a rafter that'll be for our 412 hip that goes here and that will die right into this. So um, this is where I say field applied. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take these bad boys. We're gonna mark, well, let's do this. Let's go 10 and a half plus five and a half. Is that 15? That makes sense, right? No, it's 16 inches I gotta go. Yes. And we're gonna do this. We're gonna take this. I can just go ahead and get it screwed into this board. As long as that's not gonna mess me up. End of the day, this is all kind of temporary. Honestly, it's kind of like a foolproof way of doing it. Well, it should be. So there's my five and a, or 10 and a half, which this now is where, if this was not a hip, this would be right where my fascia is gonna go. Greg, you might as well grab your ladder and put a, maybe. I've already got, I'm already set up down that way. Oh, okay, all right, all right. Well then let me do that one and we'll go that way. Okay, so that's definitely sturdy enough. Let me do the same thing on this guy. So this only works when you've got everything plumb also. You gotta have your corners plumb to do this part right here because we're basically gonna determine where we're cutting off our fascia. Nothing really new, nothing really cool. This is kind of like standard framing stuff. It's just utilized in a little bit different manner because we're doing post frame. I'm tightening her up, Greg. 
Okay, man, go ahead and snap it. Okay, cool. So you see how I'm just kissed right on my board? So that is my 10 and a half inches. That's where I want it. And then I'm curious, go ahead and let go, buddy. I am curious to see how close we are. My guess is we're not gonna be perfect, but hopefully close. So right here. So that's maybe something like that. So now this is the real mathematical, this is where it should be, but this is where it is. So this little 16th of an inch discrepancy, I will sleep tonight, not a big deal. Honestly guys, if you have a better way of doing this without either using math that is inevitably not exact, like I could have went off this math and it would be probably good enough, but I don't like good enough. I wanna to try to get it as perfect for the situation, which means you use the math, but then you apply a little bit of field science to determine exactly uh, what you need to do. So I'm just gonna nail this down. Screw it. Yeah, in the end, as long as it looks good, nobody's even gonna matter, but I always figure if I can find a better, faster way to do this, I just make my job easier, really. That's, because I know it's gonna look good. Yep. So it's basically what that tells me. Hey, Greg, we already knew this. So we're about an, not even an eighth, maybe an eighth of an inch in mathematically from where we are actually. And do you remember when I cut that board to plumb? We weren't nine or we weren't eight foot ten and a half or whatever. We were an eighth inch shy. Yeah. So what that means is that corner post although it's plumb at the bottom and square where it needs to be, it must have a slight bow in. So when that post bows in that eighth of an inch and I measured this point here off the math, it brought it in an eighth of an inch, but our porch and our base of our porch is all done off of square, which is the foundation. So that's why I was saying math is great, but if everything isn't perfect, which wood is not, then that's where you get air. Now we can go ahead and cut all these off and get our fascia boards on. The last one, the one that's in the middle of the pile, of course. The oh yeah, that's that's a beaut, Clark. Yeah, I know it is. Right there, hold that. Yeah, I think we're pretty good. So that's that's. That's how I found the best way to uh, make this work, but let's run this other side. We'll see how straight it looks. Cause it can be good, but if it don't look good, it ain't good. All right guys, new day. We got started a little bit earlier and uh, I'm working on cutting rafters while Greg is doing some prep work for purlins. And uh, actually, you know what? A lot of people were asking about like a full in-depth video on how, you know, we do our rafters and the math involved and get all these dimensions to figure it out. I'm gonna do that and that's gonna go up on the channel. So stay tuned. And if you aren't already subscribed, make sure you do that and hit the bell so that you're notified when that new video comes up, if it's something that you're interested in. But anyway, I'm doing rafters. We're gonna get this porch built. I picked up sheathing um, yesterday, some more purlins. So we should have everything we need, and I'm hoping that we can get, get done before it gets too hot, because they're calling, I think, 100. What is the temps, Greg? I mean, today's only supposed to be 90. But what's the, what the, I think the real feel is 100, ain't it? It doesn't matter, it's just gonna be warm, so we just gotta do what we gotta do, and we might just have to put in some shorter days or start even earlier, I don't know. There's a little teaser, guys, if you uh, got a bunch of notes, things that you will learn if you watch the rafter video. It's all math, so if you're scared of math, then you probably need to watch the video because you shouldn't be. Three and three quarters, five and three quarters, 
seven three quarters. I'm just laying out my purlin locations. Doing some mass marking. Chicken salad, Caesar salad. You can call it a Caesar salad, but not chicken salad. Garden salad. What? <laughs> what is closer? I don't know. Diana. Just tell me, brother. Salmon salad. Salmon salad. Yeah. You are a changed man. I don't know if I like you anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and that is a two and 13 sixteenths pitch. Okay, so with a hip rafter, even though this is a 412 pitch roof, we actually have, well, kind of, if you look at this, we have a common rafter. So we've been doing a 412 common, and then we also have a hip valley. So if I'm putting this on my rafter and I'm going to a 412 common, right, that would be, that would be a 412 pitch. But if I'm doing a hip valley, now I go to the four on the hip valley. Let's move it over. And this would be the pitch of that, which according to my math, if I take this sick Martinez, I would set it up at 12 inches. and then two and 13 sixteenths. And in theory, this, see that angle that I just did? That is correct. So when you're cutting rafters, there's just different types of rafters. There's not just commons, there's also hip valley. And this is gonna be a hip rafter. So I need to change the pitch, even though it's still on a 412 roof. So. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead though and do two 13 sixteenths. Well, let's just go ahead and cut this top real quick. All right. Cut that. Then we've got two and 13 sixteenths pitch. Let's multiply that times two inch 13 sixteenths times 1.5. It's four and a quarter. So we're gonna go four and a quarter, and we're gonna go 18 inches. I just like to spread this out a little bit. Gets a little bit more accurate. And this is so I can make this cut here. Aha, I almost messed up there. You got a little something special special on this one I gotta do. Okay, there. So on this guy, all my other purlins on this porch have sat up, or sorry, sat down into the roof and my purlins went over top. This one's actually gonna be flush with my sheathing. So my sheathing will, my purlins will die into this guy and um, I need to calculate this drop here that's gonna go into my fascia, which I've already got inch and a half up there. So two and three sixteenths. So what I'm doing here is, this is my fascia, and this is my diagonal rafter that's gonna die into it. I know the dimension from this point all the way up to my wall corner here, but I need to subtract this distance here, which by using the simple triangles and math, that's two and three sixteenths of an inch. So when I, when I get my total dimension of 13 feet, 15 sixteenths, 13 feet, minus two inch, three sixteenths. Now I know my, uh, my diagonal, my, my actual length measurement is 12, 10, three quarters. If you're confused a little bit, like I said, I did a video on figuring all this stuff out. And when you learn those simple triangle measurements and how to calculate it, 
it does make it simple when you can rack your brain around it. I'm just a simple post framer, so it still takes me a little bit of time. Um, but knowing that I came in two inch three sixteenths, what is my rise on that? Um, two inch 13 sixteenths pitch. That's half inch rise. So what that tells me is that I got a fascia board and then we've got that flat two by six out at the porch. I got my fascia here and then I'm gonna have a rafter, my, my rafter here. I'm trying to figure out this dimension so that I can cut off and it fits right in there. So I've got inch and a half. Well, here we got five and a half. It's probably hard to see, but it's more for me. And then we've got minus an inch and a half. So we're at four inches here and then I need to add another half inch. So what that means is right here, I got, a, I got some thinking to do here. If I'm gonna try to be perfect on this, because I also need to do a 45 degree cut on this. And this point right here is gonna be my four and a half inch down. So let's go ahead and cut that at a nice 45 and then we're gonna come back and do our math. But now that I know those numbers, I should be, should be good. This is four and a half here. We're not like doctors where if you mess up, somebody could die, right, Greg? So that's kinda, of, we got that going for us. Uh, yeah. Well, actually, we, we could, sorry. Let's, let's, let's scratch that, we don't wanna say that. That probably sounds bad. So the goal with this cut probably will kind of start to make a little sense. Oops. This is so that it can sit where my face is gonna come together, like that. So this is the hip, and that half inch that I had to figure out is because in order to plane this in to this, it needs to sit proud a half inch up so that when it planes down in, it'll hit this point here. So that was kind of the math I was trying to do. And Greg wants me to drop this even more so that when our purlins come in, I think that's a good idea. I think it'll make it a little bit cleaner. I just gotta, once again, do a little bit more math. To the diagonal. No. Hmm. That should be my bottom cut. That should sit in there nice and good. All right, now we measure up and cut our top cut and we should be, should be good. Hey Greg, because I am never 100% confident, can you meet me over there on that, on the outside corner? Let's just get a rough estimate on if 12, 10 and three quarters is close, okay? That'll at least, before we totally mess up this entire board. Yeah? yeah? Okay. <laughs> Wheel, if math doesn't lie, that sucker's gonna fit right in there. But one more thing that I wanna do is I wanna lay out where my purlins are gonna die in here. And I swear I always get that wrong, so I'm hoping to think through this a little bit better because a couple things that I've kind of realized as I have done more and more of these, I've been like, oh yeah, that, that makes sense why that's off. Things like not adding up little tiny measurement drops that even though they're very small, like 3 sixteenths of an inch here or there, um, they do add up and I need to calculate those to make sure they're right. So now I need to think this through because all my purlins are coming in at an angle. I can't just go every two foot. It's actually based off of some compound angles of this uh, rafter at a different angle than a 412. So if that makes sense, it doesn't even make sense to me to be honest, I'm, I'm still thinking through it. So I'm all good right now, but we will find out very soon if my math is correct. My execution is flawless. All right, now the moment of truth. Ooh. All right, G-Money, grab yours. You set yours in there first. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I, 
that is super satisfying. And when I look down the tip, Greg, it looks beautiful. <laughs> it's even seated on our two by six perfectly. I'm just gonna walk away for it. I messed something up. <laughs> right where I marked it, we are perfect right there. And when I plane the top of this, we go right out to the corner. We get lucky sometimes, you know. Hey, every once in a while, blind squirrel finds a nut. But once again, man, math don't lie. But I can promise you, we'd have never, we would have never gotten this far if the building wasn't plumb, if the building wasn't square, if the porch wasn't squared up to the building and those posts weren't plumbed up. Like everything starts at the very beginning. And sometimes people will comment like, dude, it's not that deep. You're not building a cabinet type conversation. And honestly, it's not about that. It's about just making our job easier sitting down on a set of sawhorses, doing some math, making some cuts, and first try. There's no no trickery. Like, literally, that was the first try, first cut. Dropped it right in, so. Note to editor, make sure that was the first one. Yeah, note to editor. <laughs> make sure that you clip out all the other tries. No, I'm joking. Um, but we got one more thing that I am anxious to see, and that is where our purlins die into this, because that's the math that always seems to mess me up for one reason or another. But. This is gonna get some blocking. We'll get all the hangers on this and this is gonna be a nice strong connection. So we're just gonna temporarily tie this together. All right guys, so we are now gonna cut our purlins to die into our hip rafter. Now, most of our time, most of the time our purlins sit on top of a rafter, but because we like to have a nice solid um, place to nail our sheathing on that hip, we also like to run our purlins into it so that it planes to the top of that Raffer. Makes sense, right? Well, we got to cut them, and this is a compound angle. Something that will confuse me every time I do it because I don't do it enough to always commit to memory. But the things I remember from our math is that our angle, the pitch angle of that hip, was at 46.5 degrees. If we were laying in a flat plane, it would be 45 degrees because we've got all equal dimensions and we've got a board running straight through the middle of it, creating a triangle, right? But since it's now tilted up, at a 412 pitch, actually two and 13 sixteenths for the hip, if you guys remember, difference between commons and hip valleys, we need to cut them with a compound miter. We've got a 46.5 angle, and then we also need to bevel cut them to the two and 13 sixteenths, I guess, angle of the uh, roof there at the hip. So we're gonna take this guy here, and we're gonna go to 13.19. So just past 13. And this will all make sense when I make this first cut. Now some may say, well that's cheating using a miter saw to do this, you could just do this with a hand saw. Yeah, I could. But this is way easier and way cleaner. So now, Let's go out here and I'll show you why we did it like this. All right, so now you can see we've got this compound miter. It's at a 46 and a half degree with a two and 13 six bevel cut. And now what that is for, so when I plane in to this hip rafter, I can kind of take it up to my wall just to confirm that it's going at the right angle. But depending on where my purlins are, in fact, I've got one that's gonna go somewhere in there like so, that's how we know that we're going into the right angle. So I always like to do a test one also, just so you can conceptually see what we're doing. The nice thing is because our purlins are gonna lap those purlins and just kind of go past, I don't have to cut anything exactly to size. I'm just gonna cut the ends of a bunch of purlins with this beveled pitch cut here. And then we'll go ahead and install them, cut off the excess, life is good. And we'll be onto sheathing in no time. All right, now that we got those up, we're gonna go ahead and eyeball this hip. I could set a string up, but eh, it's not really necessary. I think it's pretty close anyway, and I value my eyeball. Like, that's, that's my money maker. Yeah, it's really just a little bit of a pull on that bottom one.
Perlin's done, fascia done, porch looks great. We will be putting hangers on everything, don't worry. Greg will be putting hangers on everything. That's his job, he loves it. In fact, he loves it because he got the new pads load, PPN nailer. And you know, having cordless, small, power. What? Light. It's lightweight, it's, it's just awesome. So yeah, we will do all that, but we wanna get this roof on. It'll hold everything perfect. Um, but everything looks really nice and straight, man. You know, sometimes it just works out and this one does look really good. So let's get all the sheathing tools. Let's get some cut, uh, sheathing cut down to what we need it and this will probably run us right into lunchtime, huh? Probably is lunch. Oh, it is? Like oh, we can take lunch then. That's cool. All right, these first three are the ones we had to take an inch and a half off, and that is because we do a staggered purlin, which means that we always figure everything to be a perfect flush uh, fascia and sheathing at the bottom. But whenever we stagger down, we're going to obviously lose an inch and a half. So, uh, Let's go ahead and, how do you wanna do this? You wanna just take one up and yeah, I'll go up there and... I'll hand it up to you. Okay, let's go ahead and get this installed. All right, with the Weather Logic, since it's, it's a really premium product, I feel good about its uh, dimensional characteristics. And we framed this all square. What I'm gonna do is just get my far corner lined up with my uh, square, make sure that that's uh, in plane. My battery bad. Hey, Greg, look on the ground. There's a battery. Okay. Greg, the battery. Don't worry about your gun. See it? Is it fresh, though? I hope so. <laughs> I grabbed it. Let's see. Do we have green light? Uh, it doesn't matter. It's Here. That's a decent one. It's decent. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my square, make sure that we like it. Oh, that didn't sound good. Misfire. And we need to settle this down. This thing is going to blow through. Let's, uh, I might have done something wrong when I cleaned it. Okay. So back to what I was saying. Yeah, this battery actually does sound a little weak. Once I've straightened this edge, now what I can do is I can come up here and look at this, without moving it, look how close I am. Now, we're never perfect, so all I'm gonna do is just give it a little tap, get it lined up on the edge. That's my problem, I think I'm out of gas. I haven't used this one in a while, I grabbed both guns. Anyway, so this is super easy once we've started square, because we built it square. Greg, I need gas, that's what I think I need. No, I got it right here, buddy, I already got it out. Hey, I'm prepared, I'm a Boy Scout, I'm an Eagle Scout at that. This is now ready to go. We're just gonna lay into the gable or the hip, cut it off, and lay right around. Sheathing the porch roofs, man, are just a joy because we spend all the time building as good as possible, so the sheathing just kinda lays right in. What do you think? Yeah. All right, we're gonna leave those, that nailing for Greg, he loves to be able to do some of that. So, oh, are you coming up, Bug Dog? Here, you're a good guy, man. Oh, dude, they look good, too. So what this allows us to do is ensure that if everything is good and square, we attach our sheathing flush with our fascia, it's gonna also straighten out the fascia because we've got framing here and we've got framing all the way all the way over here. So the eight foot, your board can do this a little bit here on this fascia and this is what we're gonna do to straighten it out. But other than that, these two sheets went up just like the rest of them go up. We do have some cutting to do on the hip, but uh, yeah, maybe some drone action would be good for you guys to kind of get a nice little top down picture. So let's run into that. I would say it's the worst part about sweating. You know what I'm saying? Like sawdust and sweat.
think that's it. Nice, dude. Hmm, nah, I don't like that. I'm gonna throw it on the roof. I don't want you to catch it and get starred. Do you like what I did on my cut, Greg? How tall can you fit, though? How tall can I fit? Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to cut it down to, to 16 if you can go up a little higher. Is that a Leica or is that what it is? Leica. <laughs> Give me a measurement. I could fit in height, I could fit in 18. So I'm glad I didn't go 19. <laughs> I would have been kind of mad if I would have cut you a 19, like a, if I would have cut you like a 19 and then it like it didn't fit. Do I have to go deeper? Nope. Hit the uh, hit the miter too, my guy. Whoo! Nice. We got another roof sheathed. Went well. Everything went together quite swimmingly, as they would say. And now we are ready for metal. Uh, but I think that's going to be it for today. Probably it for this video. So if you like the sound of a pass load in the background going off while I'm talking, make sure you hit thumbs up on this one, guys. And uh, we'll be back. We're going to do porch metal. That thing must be overheating, dude. It sounds awful. <laughs> I, I don't... Where's it coming it, from? It, it, it's, it feel how oh, it's gone. OK, yeah, that's, well, that's the fan. I can feel the heat coming from it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's hot. hot. That's hot. Yeah. But hey, it's still performing, dude. No problem. Yeah. Kind of. For now. For now. Well, guys, we'll catch you on the next one. We're going to be back. We're going to do metal to finish up this porch. We've got porch roof, porch ceiling, porch details, and a little bit of steel on the walls. Probably one more video we will have this exterior wrapped. And then we go into the inside where we've got interior. We've got a black ceiling. So people are always curious about the black ceilings. I like them. I haven't thought about whether I'm going to do it on mine or not yet. Mm. I don't know, because I do like bright ceilings. So black is pretty what dark. What in between to galvanize? I thought about, no, maybe like a light gray or something. A light gray? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. What do you guys think? Let me know down below in the comments about what I should do for my ceiling in my shop. But uh, we also have a mezzanine to build out in this. Pretty minor work. We're not doing all the finished details. We're just building the frame. So stick along, stick around if you, uh, if you want to see that come through. But Greg and I are going to clean up. I'm going to try to literally clean up because I'm covered in sawdust. And uh, we'll catch you guys on the next video. Ooh, shiner.